believe you brought your Bible to church. Um, I know it's not very common for people to bring their Bibles anymore. People bring their phones. Uh, this church is quite unique because when I look at the flags, one, two, three, plenty of flags. It means you have many nationalities here. I'm told there are about 27. Wow, well, that's challenging, pastoring 27 different nationalities. Because one joke in one country can be an offense in that country. <laughs> so you have to be careful what, what kind of, what do you see? And what do you say? Pastor, God bless you. Thanks for the work you're doing. The Lord will enlarge your ministry, take you to higher heights in the name of Jesus. In my church in Lagos, I don't think we are more than four nationalities. And we're all African, so we understand the jokes. <laughs> because we're all West African. The only thing we fight about is whether it's Ghanaian rice or the Nigerian jollof rice that we fight about. But here, I you have all kinds of people. So it can be quite challenging. So please do pray for your pastor, because that in itself is a is work. The good thing is that when we get to heaven, there will be another tribe, no, yeah, no tribe on tongue. We're all going to be the same. Praise God. Have you found the book of Genesis 26? Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Praise God. I'll start from verse number 12. This morning I'm going to be teaching on what I call dig up the wells. Tell anybody dig up the wells. Yes. Genesis 26 from verse number 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. This is not part of my message, but let me quickly add, for the, because I see a lot of foreigners in the room, please sow in the land where God has sent you to. Sow in the land. Pray for the land. When they went out to captivity, in the book of Jeremiah, I said, look, pray for the city the Lord has sent you to. Pray for the good of that city. Because in the good of that city, you also will have the good. I don't so forget your country where you come from. Don't forget Nigeria. Don't forget Lagos. Send us help, praise God. But pray for the United Kingdom. Pray for the goodness and the prosperity of this land. Amen. So Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of heads and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Prosperity always leads to envy. You can't be doing well and not be envied. If you don't want to be envied, don't do well. You can be pitied. But if you are doing well, you will be envied. It's a natural process. That's what one of the things I talked about in the first shift. Promotion, enlargement, blessing provokes envy. Just natural. Take it like that. Praise God. So the Philistines envied him. Now, verse 15, the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the days of Abraham. They stuck up all the wells out of envy and jealousy and the green eye monster. They stuck up all the wells which his father has dug up. They feed them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gira and dwelt there. What did Isaac do? Verse 18. And Isaac did what? Dug again. Tell your neighbor, dig again. So Isaac dug again the wells of water which had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. Isaac just went back, went back to walk and dig again. You remember that without waters, you couldn't become a farmer. You can't do well. So it was an essential part of life. And I'm told that part of the fight in southern Sudan was over wells of water. It was just the source of life. It was just important. So in those days, you can imagine, if you don't have a well, you can't be a farmer. So when they put pit and death into the well, they are going to stop him from prospering. But Isaac refused to allow the enemies to succeed. Bible says Isaac dug again the wells that his father had dug because the Philistines had, you know, filled them up. So my challenge to us this morning, as believers, we need to dig again the wells. Dig again your spiritual wells. Dig again your hunger for God. Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm particularly talking to those people here this morning who have gone cold in their spiritual work with God. That's what I'm asking you to do. Not financial digging this morning, 
But you know you used to be a Christian for God. You need to be on fire. You used to be hot for Jesus. But things have happened in your life that right now you know you are no longer where you used to be. You've gone cold. Scripture says you are neither hot nor cold. Because you are neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spool you out of my mouth. So I mean, God himself preferred that you are either hot or cold. Because if you are hot, I know where you are. But you are lukewarm. Because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spool you out of your mouth. So the challenge to us this morning is to dig the wells that you already had. Some of you have stories. Oh, when I came to England, I used to be hot for Jesus. I was going out for evangelism every day. Oh my God, I could pray. But what is happening now? If your yesterday is better than your today, it means you are backslidden. If you say, oh, you know, when I came, I used to be hot. I go out to the train station. I evangelize. I invite people to church. Sir, what are you doing now? You need to dig that well again. Some of us, things have happened to us. There's some issues that have happened in your spiritual life. Maybe there are some things the pastors have said or elders have said or, or leaders have said in church, you have gone cold. You're no longer, the zeal of the Lord is no longer consuming you. You used to be, you know you had zeal before, but now you're, you're, you, know, you are full of knowledge but no zeal. Some people, they are full of knowledge, no zeal. They know scriptures. Oh, they, when you are quoting the scripture, they can conclude the scripture for you. <laughs> but you see, it's not the knowing that matters. It's what you do with what you know that matters. So this morning I've come to tell you dig the well again because you have gone lukewarm. Isaac knew he had to dig the wells again. It doesn't matter what caused the well to be filled with the past. It's time to dig again. Tell your neighbor, dig again. As I look at the scriptures, I found that there are various reasons that can lead to what I call spiritual dryness. What makes your well to be dry? There are a lot of things that can lead to it. We're going to look at them quickly. What can cause and what you need to do as a believer to fan to flame that you know, zeal you had before. To open the waters and let this flow again. What can you do as a believer? But let's start with what causes this barrenness and dryness in the spirit. Number one. Number one, I find out what causes is when the hope is deferred. The Bible says when hope deferred, make the heart to be sick. When you're believing God for something and it doesn't come, after some time, you just give up. You just give up. I'm not sure God is able to do it again or I'm not sure God likes me or whatever. Let's see Proverbs 13 verse number 12. Because we're going to be digging our wells again this morning. Because today we're going to realize that, look, something's wrong somewhere. I'm not the way I used to be. I'm not as hot as I used to be. I'm not as zealous as I used to be. I'm not as committed as I used to be. I'm not as faithful as I used to be. And I need to open the wells and dig again. Proverbs 13 verse 12. Hope defies make the heart to be sick. But when desires come, it's a tree of life. Your hope will no longer be defied in the name of Jesus. I don't know what is causing that, 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 that defying of hope. But I pray that the Lord will answer your prayers today in the name of Jesus. So hope defies make the heart to grow sick. Number two, what can make someone to become dry? I find that is what I call physical exhaustion. When you are tired, you've overworked yourself. You know, sometimes thank God for doing things for God. Even pastors, we are most guilty. Okay? You walk, 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 walk. Because you are praying for everybody but yourself. You are counseling everybody but yourself. You are meeting every need but yourself. And after some time, you are exhausted. It's found out sad that in America, particularly, where we have statistics, we don't have a lot of statistics where I come from, part of the world, but at least we look at European statistics and American statistics. A lot of pastors just quit. Pastors just resign. I'm not doing it anymore. What has happened? He's physically exhausted, drained. So as believers, we need something to take time off to rest, to recharge our batteries. Just chill out. Do nothing. Praise God. Part of my trip was to chill out and do nothing until you go. Pastor, are you around? Yes, please come. <laughs> so it's eating into my chilling out time. Praise God. So you need as believers need to rest. Matthew 11 verse 28 to 23, we need to rest so that we don't burn out. Because when you Born, when you are burnt out physically, it can affect your spiritual sensitivity and spiritual you know, abilities for God. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 23. 
Matthew 11 from verse 28. At that time, Jesus answered, Father, I thank you for your, for your Lord have open and earth. You have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seems good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me and no one knows except the, except the Son, whom the Father. Except the Father. Now, does anyone know the Father except the Son and the one to whom you reveal them? Come to me, all you who, who labor and are heavy lady. What will I do? I will give you rest. So there is a need for rest. There's a need for rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. So sometimes we are exhausted from the physical things we do. And then spiritual things now be, you know, there's no more space for them. Businessmen in the house, you are too busy making the money. You don't even have time for your spiritual upkeep. So we need to take time to rest so we don't burn out. Number three, causes of you know, dryness, conflicts, and losses. Job chapter 7, verse 1 to 7. Sometimes when there are losses in the family or losses at the job place, or things just go bad. You know, you can lose what the Bible calls the joy of salvation. You know, one of the psalmists says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. That was a cry. Because the man knew that something was gone wrong. Renew the right spirit to me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. So when things go south, when things go bad, you need to watch out so it don't go dry. Spiritually. Number what, Nasa? I want to know that you are following me. Number four. Number four is what I call unconfessed sins. When there's a sin in your life and you refuse to confess it, it can lead to spiritual dryness. Psalm 51, verse, from verse number one. Let's see that quickly. Psalm 51, from verse number one. When there's a sin you have refused to confess, it can lead to spiritual dryness. And you need to recognize that and dig the well again. Give ear to me, O oh, Give ear to my prayer, O oh God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear my cry. I'm restless and in my complaint, I moan noisily because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me and in the wrath they hate me. My heart is severely pained with me, and my to the terrors of my heart have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and so has overwhelmed me. So all of these things keep on going. Because there was sin in his heart that he refused to confess to God. So when there's, you know, when there was sin in our lives, what I call secret sin, sin that people don't know, you don't find that you are getting drier and drier and drier and drier. There's no longer joy, there's no longer excitement, there's no longer willingness to do the things of God. The brother that used to be bubbling and full of life, something's gone wrong. May that not be your portion in the name of Jesus. My heart prayer that the Lord will restore you. The Lord will restore the joy of your salvation in the name of Jesus. That vitality that be drained away, the Lord will restore in the name of Jesus. Your hunger for God, your desire for God, your pursuit for God will be restored in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So, we need to watch out for, for our lives so that we don't get dry. You know, you can have what I call all movement but no motion. Or rather, all motion but no movement. You have, you have, there's motion but you're not um, moving forward. You know, there's motion, but you're not moving forward. There's motion, you're not moving forward. Because you are dry spiritually. Father, Lord, I pray for every man here this morning who have besetting sin, that those sins be cut off in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will restore the joy of our salvation. Because sometimes we have lost the joy because things have not gone the way we planned. You were hoping and believing that if I do this, then this will happen. But sometimes you do this and do that, it doesn't happen. And then you say, Lord, what's going on here? And if you're not careful, you can take offense. You know you can be offended at God. Hmm? The guy who wrote the book, I'm angry with God. Because God did not do what you are planning that God will do. At the time you are planning that God should do it. You know? You're planning that God will do this thing at this time. And God says, your time is not my time. Because your way is not my way. Then you're offended. <laughs> praise God. I say, praise the Lord. 
the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So if you see a brother or a sister who has lost zeal or passion, if you see a brother who is serving out of duty and no longer out of love, if you see a brother who is wearied and tired, if you see a brother who feel like giving up, if you see a brother who is quitting on his service and his love of God, there's something wrong. That person has gone dry and the person needs um, restoration. May the Lord restore to us the joy of salvation in the name of Jesus. How do I get refreshed? Now that we know what can cause it, and there is reason that can cause it, I may not have listed all of it, but how do I get refreshing and restoration? Let's see the book of Matthew chapter 9. I love this scripture. Matthew chapter 9. Lord, I'm going to dig my words again this morning. In the name of Jesus. Freshness is my portion. In the name of Jesus. Because the Lord anoints my head with fresh uh, oil. My cup runs over. There's an anointing for freshness today. In the name of Jesus. My joy is restored. My zeal for God is restored. In the name of My love for the things of God is restored today. In the name of Jesus. So Matthew chapter 9. Let's start from verse number 12. Uh, from verse 15. You, you know this scripture very well because it's repeated in Matthew 9, it's repeated in Luke, and it's repeated in, 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 in Mark. The story of the bottles and the wine. Matthew 9 from verse 15. And Jesus said to them, Can he, the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and when they will fast. No one puts, please, no, please let's follow now, verse 16. No one puts a piece of unsunk clothes on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Now, verse 17. Now, do they put new wines into what? New wine skin. You don't put new wines into new wine skins, or else the wine skin breaks, the wine is split, and the wine skins are ruined. But they put new wines into new wine skins, and both are preserved. You know this story very well. Okay? New wine, new wine skin. I think it's a message translation that says you don't put new wine into new bottles or something like that. And I said, no, that's not correct. You can't be talking about bottles. Because they were, there were no bottles in those days. So they were wine skin. Okay? And I'm sure for those of us who have gone to Bible school, the wine skin were made from animal skin. And if, it's, if after using the, the, wine, the, the, animal, the, the wine skins, it can shrink. Okay? It can become fragile. So you don't put new wines there because the new wines have a lot of energy and you know into a fragile wine skin. So, but what do you do with the old wine skin? You don't throw it away. No, because that means you have to be buying new wine skins or doing new wine skins every day. So, what do you do? And that's what we need to do as believers. If we notice in our lives that things have gone stale, there is no longer excitement, no longer joy. You know, sometimes you're becoming to church for a long time, and sometimes. You know what the pastor is going to preach. You know all his jokes. You know all his moves. <laughs> and if you're not careful, you're you no longer excited in your Christian work. Because as believers, that joy of salvation, you must never lose it. But sometimes we do get stale as believers. So what do we do? So you go and do what they do to the new wine skin or the old wine skin. What do you do? They soak it in water. You soak it until it becomes soft. And succulent again, ready to receive the new wine. What do we what is our water as believers? Thank you, sir. So we need to, as believers, to ensure that we don't become stale and and hard and no longer sensitive to the move of God. We need to take time as believers to soak ourselves in the word of God. We need to take time in the presence of the Holy Spirit and just lay before the Lord. And ask the Lord to renew you and to restore you. Praise God. I know, thank God, this church, they pray in church. I've been told. This church pray. But you need to have your own personal devotion and personal time of waiting upon the Lord. Otherwise, you will just become stale. You'll be coming to a church every Sunday, praise God. Giving the offering every Sunday. Dancing every Sunday. But there's no longer a relationship with Jesus. You are so far away from him. The Lord will be shouting. You won't be hearing what he's shouting. The Lord will be giving you red flags. He says, stop, stop. So you won't be seeing the red flag. You'll just be breaking the red flag and the police will be arresting you. Praise God. <laughs> I hear pastor used to be a policeman. Praise God. <laughs> and I say, pastor, were there criminals you're arresting here? I say, no, okay. <laughs> so as believers, we need to spend time 
with the Holy Spirit in fellowship. That's how we're going to remain relevant and current with the things of God. Otherwise, the well is going to be dry. No water is flowing out of it anymore. In fact, anything flowing out of it will be dead. But if we're going to remain current with God as believers, we must spend time and soak ourselves in the presence of God, in prayers, in devotion, in the study of the word. So we can hear what God is saying to us at this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, God is always speaking. God is always speaking. In time past, God spoke. Now God is speaking. The Spirit of God speaks expressly. But the question is, are believers hearing him? Are we hearing what God is saying? The only way we can hear what God is saying, and I can say you from my own personal work with God, is to spend time with the word of God. Spend time in the presence of God. Spend time communing with the Holy Spirit. Just spend time. Not because the pastor has decreed it, or because the church has announced it, but because you as a believer, you also know that God is drawing me to say, my daughter, I want to spend some time with you. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. As we do this, the old wine skins will become renewed. The old wine skins will become relevant. The old wine skins will become useful for the Lord. Praise God. So spend time to make the old wine skin usable. Soak yourself in the world. Spend time in the Holy Spirit. Let the oil be rubbed on you so it can become pliable and malleable and reusable. Soak yourself in the world and get ready to be used by God. Praise God. Bible says, let the word of God dwell richly in you. Speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and make a melody in your hearts to the Lord. You see some people who are just grumbling all the time. Mm -hmm, complaining. What's going on? It's a sign that something is wrong. If there's a brother or a sister who's always complaining, mm -hmm, something is uh, wrong. <laughs> Praise God. Something is wrong. Because believers, you should be full of joy. You should be full of thanksgiving. You should be full of excitement. But if all you are doing, mm -hmm, you know what that is? Mm -hmm. That's mm, the UK. <laughs> <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Something is wrong with them. We praise God. Number two, to get yourself renewed is to spend time in fellowship with believers and also to reconcile with people that they have caused offense. Offenses will come. In any church like this, there will be offenses. I'm telling you for free. I've been pastor for years now. There will be offenses. Pastor, that message you were preaching at me, I didn't preach at you. You are offended. Pastor, I didn't like the suit you wore yesterday. You are offended. Pastor, your wife, your wife behave on your offense. Offenses will come. So as believers, keep your heart free of uh, offenses. Let there be reconciliation in the body of Christ. And the Lord will help us to reconcile in the name of Jesus. So we can walk as believers. Bible says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together what? In unity. It's like the oil upon the head that flows upon the bed. Even to, even to the skirts of the garment. So if there is no unity, the anointing will not flow. You become a stale anointing, offensive anointing. But let's work together as a group, work together as brothers and sisters, and show we unite so that that way the grace of God and the anointing of God will flow upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Spend time to minister to other people. As you minister to other people, you give room for love to flow. Praise God. Minister to those in needs. If you've not seen a sister or a brother in church for a long time, call, hey, look, man, I've not seen you for the church. I hope all is well. Minister, reach out to people, and as you become a blessing, the blessings of God will flow to you. The Bible says, out of your belly shall what? Flow rivers of living water. Praise God. I've gone to Jordan. I've never been to Israel, but I went to Jordan once, and I went to what they call the Dead Sea. I'm sure you, yeah. It's really dead. Why is it dead? It's not flowing. They talk about the, the geographers talk about the salinity or the saltiness. I understand that if you well, actually went there to see whether I could sink, you can't sink because it is very salty. Let your life not be like that. Are you with me? Let it flow. Praise God. Let it flow. Why you just we are not ministering to other people, then it will not flow. So, number one, I've said you need to spend time with prayer, spend time with the word of God. Number two, learn to ensure you are in fellowship with other people and you are reconciling with other people. Number three, please become someone who is giving to other people. The Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. And stay in the place of prayers. 
I believe this is a Pentecostal church, and I'm Pentecostal church. You learn to pray in tongues. I mean, people pray in tongues here. Praise God. Spend, 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 spend time praying with other tongues. Jude says you should build up yourself praying in the uh, Holy Ghost or recharge your batteries praying in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes our batteries, our spiritual batteries are low and therefore we need to recharge our batteries by praying in the Holy Ghost. So as believers, if, you, if, you, if God has blessed you with the, the, the gift of praying in tongues, spend time praying in tongues so that you can recharge your spiritual batteries because sometimes it does run low. Praise God. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And please finally speak words of healing to your life. I don't know what has caused the offense. So if you go back to the book we started from Genesis, the Bible says that the Philistines came and threw death into the wells, and the wells dried up. Praise God. What has caused your well to dry up? What has caused your well to dry up? It could be what was said by somebody. It could be what was done by somebody. It could be what was taken away from you. That's caused the world to dry up. Sometimes it could be husband and wife relationship that's dried up. That, that romance in the home just dried up. That friendship. There are married people here, aren't they? That romance in the home just dried up. You know, some of us are married, you know, just high, high, high. That relationship has uh, dried up. And if it's not restored, it will pack up. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. So you need to, you know, renew it. <laughs> Bible says you should fan to flame this gift of God that is in you, which was given to you by the laying of hands. So relationship need to be fan to flame. So one of the to dos after service this morning for those of us who are married is to go back home and and flame it. Praise God, flame it up. <laughs> Amen. Praise. Tell your neighbor, flame it up. <laughs> yes, my sister. God bless you, man. Flame it up. <laughs> flame it up. <laughs> <laughs> because it's getting cold. Because all we talk about that is hi, how are you? Have you paid it busy? Yes. <laughs> that is all you talk about now. You need to flame it up. Fan it to flame. Just like our spiritual life needs to be fan to flame, our relationship as couples need to be flamed up. It's gone cold. It's gone cold. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I pray the Lord will give us good news. Because the Bible says that, that as tasty water, as cold water to his soul, so is good news from abroad. Good news. Oh, revitalization. That's what I'm praying for. That relationship here will be revitalized. Your relationship with your family revitalized. Your relationship with God revitalized. That's, what, that's, my, that's all I'm asking for. That that thing that you have with God, that thing you had with God originally, let it come back. That thing you had with your spouse, let it come back. That's what I'm asking for this morning. Because the wells are drying up. Because the enemies have thrown death into it. And what you need to do as a believer is take out the death. The anger, you take it out. The bitterness, you take it out. The bad words, you take it out. The disappointment, you take it out. The frustration, you take it out. The unbelief, you take it out. I say, Lord, I need a fresh dose of your grace and of your mercy so out of me again can flow rivers of living water. I don't want to be a dead sea. I want to be a flowing river. I want to be a source of blessing to men and women around me. And the Lord will do it for us in the name of Jesus. So we're going to spend some time to pray this morning if you don't mind. We're going to rise up on your feet and we're going to pray. The Lord will restore to me the joy of my salvation. Lord, restore the joy in my marriage. Lord, restore the joy in my ministry. Some of us pastors are ministry without joy. Lord, restore the joy in my ministry. Lord, restore the joy. In my, we are praying for you. Whatever you are involved in, ask the Lord to restore the joy. If you are sitting by your husband and your wife, hold their hand. Lord, restore the joy in this marriage in the name of Jesus. Restore the joy in my service to you. And the keyboard is, Lord, let me play, let me play keyboard with, with joy again in the name of Jesus. I don't know what has caused the bitterness and the anger and the frustration and the depression and whatever, Lord, take it away in the name of Jesus. Restore to me, Lord, my love for you, my joy for you, my, my zeal for the things of God. In the name of Lord, restore, 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 restore. Restore to me the joy of salvation. Put a fresh spirit upon me in the name of Jesus. Every besetting sin, I remove it in my life in the name of Jesus. Everything the enemy has done to cause me to be sorrowful, to be depressed, to be unhappy. In the th Lord, I remove them in the name of Jesus. 
I cry out to you this morning. Restore me, O God. Restore me, O God. In the name of Lord, restore me, O God. Restore my home. Restore my home. I don't know what you're praying for. It could be the joy in your home. That laughter. That laughter you used to have in your home. No, no, no more laughter. No more romance. No more, no more enthusiasm. Lord, restore it. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a joy. Let there be a restoration. Everything the enemy has done to put sand into my well, I remove it today. I dig the wells again. 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 So that my water will flow. I dig the words again. In the name of Jesus, I dig the words again. I dig the words again. In the name of Jesus, I dig the words again. Lord, restore this joy. Restore the peace we used to enjoy. Restore the grace we used to enjoy. My hope is no longer defied. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I pray for your people this morning. I call them to a restoration. You are the God who can make all things new. You are the God who can make all things new. You are the God who can bring life out of darkness. You are the God who can bring life out of death. I pray for families here this morning who may be going through a dry patch right now. I ask Lord for restoration of homes in the name of Jesus. I ask for restoration of homes in the name of Jesus. I pray for that father who has gone out of the house, who has gone wayward. I ask that that father be brought back in the name of Jesus. I pray for that woman who has gone wayward, maybe fallen under man. I ask that that woman be brought back in the name of Jesus. I pray for that ministry that that brother used to be zealous for God and used to be enthusiastic, but things have happened to him that made him to, to drop back. I pray for restoration today in the name of Jesus. Lord, let his joy be full. Let our joy be full. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The enemy will not stop us from serving you. The enemy will not stop us from serving you. No matter the attack of the devil, we will not stop serving you. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. If you were blessed, please follow us on our YouTube channel at Fota Aja. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.